Dartmouth-Hitchcock is unique in the country. It is the most rural transplant program in the country. In spite of the fact that we live in a city with a very small population, we have a great deal of resources up here, a lot of expertise, a lot of specialization that has allowed us to bring really big city medicine to a very rural part of the country. Dartmouth-Hitchcock has always been known as a hospital of excellence. That's the reason why we came up here. I first received a kidney back in uh, February of 2005, and I just recently had my second transplant, April of 2016. I have two daughters, uh, Mary and, and Laura. Both of them have recently received transplants here at Dartmouth Hitchcock. In September of 2015, I found out that I officially have medullary cystic disease. Unfortunately, it's a hereditary disease passed down to them. With my dad as a great example of how successful a transplant can be, there was no other option. You know, I'm going to find a donor, I'm going to have a transplant, and I'm going to lead a perfectly healthy life just like he has. My kidneys actually unfortunately started failing after my third pregnancy, so this was going to happen a lot sooner than we had anticipated. One of the advantages of coming to Dartmouth is because of Dr. Chobanian. He tells you exactly the way it is and what you have to do to stay healthy. As long as you follow his guidelines and what he wants you to do, you have the best chance of keeping this whatever kidney you have for as long as you can. I've been here since 1997. I've been involved in transplant for more than 40 years. And at that particular time, rejection rates were god-awful. We're talking 90% rejection rates in the first month, only about 5% of the organs lasted more than two years. It wasn't until the late 80s when we started to realize there were differences between the races. African Americans had higher rejection rates than Caucasians did, and that Hispanics also had higher rates than Caucasians, but Asians had less rejections than the other races. And those differences could not be attributable to anything other than their unique aspect toward their immune systems. We are lucky to live in a place where people are very altruistic and there tends to be a great deal of organ donors. There are other places in the country where there aren't as many organ donors and the lists in those places tends to get longer. There's a big national conversation going on right now about how we should redistribute these organs so that there's some equity in transplant waiting times. It's an interesting and hard problem to solve. The vast majority of people in New Hampshire and Vermont were Caucasian, and the vast majority of the organs available were coming from New Hampshire and Vermont. And so at least 90% of those organs were going to be from Caucasians. And so Caucasian organs going into Caucasian recipients, I came up with the idea of minimizing immunosuppressive drugs because we also saw the ravages of being on these immunosuppressive drugs literally for years. The goal is to briefly teach the immune system system that that foreign kidney is self and then have long-term tolerance to that transplanted kidney with no long-term drugs. It's the holy grail of immunology to be able to induce tolerance in a very specific way to something that's foreign. And we're getting there. In 1997, within six months, we stopped using prednisone, which is the main steroid we use for anti-rejection. Six to 12 months later, we stopped using their second drug, which was azathioprine and Celceptor mycophenolate. That left one drug in approximately half of all of our patients. We did not want to use less immunosuppressive drugs when there were other diseases that could recur in your transplant. We also would not consider using a single drug if you were getting a second transplant or a third transplant or even a fourth. So we evolved our protocol for precision medicine using one drug over time. In 2005, we started to have a scientific basis for that decision, which will be discussed by Dr. Zuckerman. When I first arrived here, what we decided to do was look into ways that we can predict if people could be on a single drug after a transplant. We acquired samples on patients to see if we could predict any factors that might relate to the constitution of the immune system that would enable us to minimize immunosuppression regimens. Early on, we discovered a molecule that's critically important for developing immune responses. The molecule is called CD40 ligand, and we've been involved with the development of drugs that can block the activity of that molecule. With these drugs, we can shut off immune responses at will. In addition, we've discovered another molecule that negatively regulates the immune system called Vista. It serves as a valuable therapeutic target in controlling immunity 
when you want. You can turn off immunity if you've got an overt inflammatory disorder or turn on immunity when you need it to fight cancer. Post-transplant care delivery here has changed with single drug immunosuppression significantly. We have less incidence of infections after transplant because patients are on less immunosuppressive drugs. We still do see significant numbers of urinary tract infections, but other infections associated with compromised immunity are decreased in our patient population simply due to the fact that the program does such an exceptional job at minimizing the immunosuppressive uh, regimen levels. If I woke up and I had amnesia, I would have never known I had a transplant until I actually looked at the scar. That's how well I feel. I think my overall experience here at Dartmouth, they do as much as they can to keep you healthy as long as possible. For my family, it all boils down to trust. We trust Dr. Chobain and his team. We trust them, you know, with our lives. Dartmouth is so on top of monitoring your labs and health. It's just a friendly facility. Everyone you come in contact with adds to the experience, you know, you feel like you're around friends and family. I love working at Dr. Hitchcock. It's been a great experience for me.